Hello, my name is Steven Ibanez, and I'm excited to tell you about the NanoPU, a nanosecond network stack for data centers. And this is joint work along with my colleagues at Stanford and Purdue. The NanoPU is a system that we've designed with the goal of minimizing both the latency and software overheads in the host network stack. Now, there are two recent trends that motivate the need to minimize both network communication latency as well as message processing overheads in software. The first trend is that large online services are increasingly deployed across thousands of machines which communicate using remote procedure calls or RPCs. The tail RPC completion time usually dictates the end-to-end -end performance of these applications because they often issue RPCs in large fanouts and need to wait for the last one to complete in order to make progress. At the same time, we observe that the cloud's seemingly boundless compute resources have inspired some researchers to deploy compute-intensive applications like video encoding, object classification, software compilation, and MapReduce-style analytics using fine-grained computing by harnessing thousands of cores in parallel. The approach has already been used to demonstrate order of magnitude reduction in runtimes on commodity infrastructure. However, commodity infrastructure is not well optimized for fine-grained computing workloads, which consist of cache-resident working sets and tons of small messages, each of which are processed in a very short amount of time, for example, one microsecond or less. And at this scale, any software cycles spent on network stack processing can significantly impact message processing throughput. We believe that if we can optimize the infrastructure for these workloads, then we'll see even greater improvements in application runtimes. Both of these trends motivate the need to minimize median and tail RPC latency, as well as software message processing overheads in order to maximize small message throughput. Therefore, we set out on a hero experiment. In this experiment, we aim to answer the question, what would it take to absolutely minimize RPC median and tail latency, as well as software processing overheads? The traditional Linux network stack is terribly inefficient when it comes to latency and small message throughput. And the networking community has of course realized this and has been exploring a number of alternative approaches to improve performance. Now we define wire to wire latency as the time from the ethernet wire to the user space application and back to the wire. So some researchers have proposed to develop custom data plane operating systems using kernel bypass techniques. These systems aim to tackle the problem of efficiently scheduling requests and application threads across cores. However, the software overheads and synchronization overheads limit the granularity with which these systems can make scheduling decisions, and thus they're ill-suited for extremely fine-grained tasks. ERPC is an, is an efficient RPC software library that utilizes many common case optimizations. And while it's able to provide an impressively low median wire-to-wire -wire latency of just 850 nanoseconds while using commodity hardware, it sacrifices tail latency, which is a metric that we believe is important to explicitly optimize for. And furthermore, the software overheads required for tasks like transport protocol processing reduce small message throughput. So to tackle this problem, some researchers have proposed offloading the transport layer to hardware while maintaining programmability. And while we agree this is a useful thing to do, this on its own is insufficient because the transport protocol is really only part of the network stack. Many commodity NICs support RDMA and hardware, and this technology is able to provide an application with very low latency access to the memory on our remote machine. However, our goal is to minimize RPC latency, which means we need to provide low latency access to remote compute, not remote memory. The best approach we've seen so far to minimize RPC latency is to integrate the NIC and CPU, thus bypassing PCIe. Nebula is one such system that uses an integrated NIC to efficiently load balance RPCs across cores and hardware. And we like this approach in general, but we believe Nebula does not go far enough. In fact, there's still room for improvement in terms of both latency and throughput. The NanoPU is our solution, which gains inspiration from a number of recent proposals, as well as some older designs from the 1980s and 90s. Similar to Nebula, we use an integrated NIC and efficiently load balance messages across cores using dedicated hardware. And similar to Tonic, we implement programmable transport in hardware. However, where the NanoPU design significantly differs from recent proposals is in the design of each core's network interface and how threads are scheduled on the cores. Traditionally, the NIC will DMA network data into host memory or the last level cache, and then applications will process that network data using load and store instructions. On the NanoPU, 
This traditional path still exists, but we also add a novel fast path directly into each core's register file. This means network messages are delivered directly to applications running on the cores without needing to go through the host memory hierarchy at all. Additionally, rather than waiting for an operating system to make thread scheduling decisions, we accelerate these decisions using a dedicated hardware module on each core. The NanoPew FastPath is able to achieve a wire-to-wire -wire latency of just 69 nanoseconds with almost zero variance at low load, and each core can process up to almost 120 million requests per second. So this makes the NanoPew the highest performing system that we are aware of to date. So let me now try to describe the NanoPew core design in a bit more detail. Here's one of the NanoPew cores with the register file, the CPU pipeline, and the L1 caches. So inspired by old HPC systems like the J machine from 1989, we will repurpose two general purpose registers for network IO and call these registers NetRx and NetTX. When an application issues an instruction that reads NetRx, this will actually read the word that's at the head of the network receive queue. And similarly, when an application issues an instruction that writes to NetTX, this will actually write a message word to the tail of the network transmit queue. The first word of each message is special and indicates the message length, so that applications are able to detect and indicate message boundaries. So we can implement a simple loopback application that echoes received three-word messages back to the sender with basically three instructions. Move the first word from NetRx to NetTX, the second word from NetRx to NetTX, and move the third word from NetRx to NetTX, which on a 3 gigahertz processor takes just one nanosecond, which for reference is about how long it takes to access the L1 cache. Okay, great. So this seems pretty simple, but what happens when there's two threads running on the core? A low priority gold thread and a high priority latency critical green thread. So let's say the gold thread is currently running on the core processing a message, and then a message arrives for that high priority green thread. So what happens now? Well, one option is to wait around for the operating system to come along and schedule the high priority thread onto the core so that it can process its message. But modern software-based thread schedulers are too coarse grained. We don't want to wait around for the operating system to make thread scheduling decisions. A high priority message just arrived and we need to start processing it right now. So in order to enable this, let's add a hardware thread scheduler to the core. The operating system will delegate scheduling decisions to this hardware module for all the latency critical threads pinned to the core. This scheduler will monitor the priority of arriving messages as well as the status of the threads and will tell the operating system exactly when to perform context switches between threads by firing interrupts. In this case, the thread scheduler will immediately fire an interrupt after the message arrives for that high priority green thread. Then the NanoPew's minimal operating system, which we call the nano kernel, performs a switch to the green thread. Okay, great. Now the green thread is running on the core and is ready to start processing its message. Oh, but wait. The gold thread's message is still sitting there on the head of the RX queue. So how the heck are we going to process our message when this message for a different thread is in the way? In other words, how do we prevent one thread from either accidentally or maliciously processing messages that are meant for another thread? So this is a huge problem, and we need to find a way to fix it if we want to have any hope of using the register file network interface. So to overcome this issue, instead of using a single RX and TX queue, we'll use separate RX and TX queues for each thread that's running on the core, and the hardware will ensure that each thread can only read from or write to its own queues. So now the green thread can process its message without anything else getting in its way. So this seemingly simple idea makes the register file network interface practical for use on modern systems. So here's a block diagram of the full NanoPew fast path. And it should be obvious that, th that this design is able to provide ultra low and predictable latency along with high throughput for small messages. Network data is processed entirely in fixed latency pipeline hardware right up until the moment an application needs to access it. The hardware is latency optimized and it runs at line rate, and the only software running on the core is the application module. We built a prototype quad core nano PU with a 200 gigabit per second network interface based on the open source RISC-V rocket coil. A block diagram of the prototype is shown here in this figure. The rocket core is a pretty simple five-stage, in-order, single-issue processor, and it required surprisingly few modifications to add support for the NanoPew's register file network interface. Our prototype runs a custom-written nanokernel, and we configure the NanoPew's programmable transport module to implement the recently proposed NDP protocol. 
We evaluate the prototype by running cycle accurate simulations on AWS FPGAs using FireSim. FireSim is great. It allows us to run large scale cycle accurate simulations of applications using hundreds of nano PU cores. The FPGAs run at 90 megahertz and we simulate a target clock rate of 3.2 gigahertz. And all the results that I'll present are in terms of this target clock rate. This figure here shows the latency breakdown for a single eight byte application message in the 72 byte packet measured from the ethernet wire through a simple loopback application on the core and then back to the wire. The wire to wire latency is just 69 nanoseconds and a single core is able to process up to 118 million requests per second. For comparison, an integrated NIC called IceNIC, which uses a more traditional DMA-based interface to the RISC-V core's last level cache, has a wire-to-wire -wire latency of about 100 nanoseconds and a per-core throughput of up to 16 million requests per second. As another point of comparison, ERPC, which is an efficient RPC library running on state-of-the-art low-latency commercial NICs, has a wire-to-wire -wire latency of 850 nanoseconds and a max per-core throughput of about 10 million requests per second. So these results demonstrate that integrating the NIC and bypassing PCIe enables significant reductions in wire-to-wire -wire latency and using the register file network interface is able to further reduce the wire-to-wire -wire latency by about another 30%. Additionally, the NanoPU FastPath significantly reduces per message software overheads, enabling order of magnitude improvement in throughput for small messages. Our evaluations of the NanoPU hardware thread scheduler indicate that relative to more traditional thread scheduling techniques, it's able to reduce tail latency by about four to six times at low load and enables the system to support about 20% higher load. So in addition to evaluating other specific as aspects of the NanoPU, such as the hardware NDP transport layer and core selection module, we also implement and evaluate a number of applications on our NanoPU prototype. MICA is a highly optimized in-memory key value store application. And here's a plot of the 99% tail latency versus load when MICA is configured to store 10,000 key value pairs with 16 byte keys and 512 byte values. The blue traditional line depicts the performance when MICA is running on IceNIC, which is an integrated NIC that uses a more traditional DMA based interface to the RISC-V core's last level cache. The green line depicts the performance when running an unmodified MICA library on the NanoPU. And the red line shows what happens when we modify about 36 lines of code in the MICA library so that it's able to efficiently process network messages out of the register file. As you can see, the optimized implementation is able to achieve a 99% tail latency of just 592 nanoseconds, which is about two times lower latency than the traditional version, and can sustain about 50% higher load than the traditional version by reducing software overheads. In addition to MICA, we also implement and evaluate a number of other applications on the NanoPU, such as raft consensus, chain replication, set algebra, and more. Another interesting use case of the NanoPU is to use it as a programmable alternative for one-sided RDMA operations. Traditionally, RDMA NICs implement one-sided operations in hardware without involving the host CPU. However, the NanoPU's extremely low latency means that implementing one-sided operations in software is actually an appealing option. When using state-of-the-art RDMA NICs, the latency of one-sided operations through a single switch with a port-to-port -port latency of 300 nanoseconds is about two microseconds. On the NanoPU, the latency is about 690 nanoseconds with very little variance, so about 65% lower latency. And since these operations are implemented in software, it's possible to support arbitrary one-sided operations without modifying the NIC hardware. For example, computing the min, max, or sum over some memory region. So we think this is a pretty neat use case for the NanoPU FastPath. The key takeaway from this project is that if we truly want to minimize media and tail RPC latency, as well as software overheads, then we need to one, bypass the memory hierarchy and add a FastPath directly from the network to the heart of the CPU pipeline. And two, we need to move the entire network stack into hardware, namely transport, load balancing, and thread scheduling, where these algorithms can run with lower latency and variability, higher throughput, and operate more efficiently. That being said, the NanoPU is not a silver bullet. There are still challenges that will need to be overcome. For example, we need to rewrite applications to use the NanoPU's register file network interface. We'll also need to figure out what the register file network interface looks like on more sophisticated processors than on a simple single issue in order rocket core. That being said, we're looking forward to facing these challenges as well as others that arise in the future. Thank you.